Well, hey, my friends, this is Robert Dosti, and I'm coming to you here on a beautiful uh, morning here in Arizona. It's been in the mid-30s, low 40s in the mornings, which I love, so I get to sit out by the fire, pray, get the heart of God, and for about the past week, the Lord has been ministering to me um, some things that are not so comfortable, and I've been really sitting on this <clears throat> for close to a week now, about a week, and I've run it by some trusted leaders that that we know and love who have a, a very uh, pure hearts and, and um, you know, hear from the Lord and, and discern well. And it's always good when you have somebody um, who has a proven track record of really walking with Jesus with a pure heart, accuracy, and who can say to you, yeah, you're right on, that you're, you're discerning correctly. And um, good morning, everybody. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining me. Um, would you go ahead and just take a minute, if you would, and, and share this video? Um, because I think the body of Christ needs to hear this. And if I'm completely honest, this is and shall be the most probably the heaviest word that I've ever released. Those of you that follow my page and follow our ministry, you know that I don't release prophetic words all that often. Uh, I don't consider myself a prophet. Me and my wife have been full-time evangelists uh, for many, many years and uh, have done a lot of apostolic work. Of course, we do prophesy when the Lord puts a word in us. And... Um, I really feel in my spirit that this has been burning and that this word needs to be released. And before I do, let me just say that our God is a redemptive God and everything he does uh, comes from a heart of redemption. Even when he has to remove things or uh, make the high places low or humble us, um, it bring, it's, it's, it's for the ultimate, for our sake, it's because he loves us so much. And... I've had a tough time this week with this word, and I know that there's probably many other people of God that, 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 that frequently release heavy words, and that it's not, um, you know, it's, it's like, well, the Lord always gives me heavy words. Well, me, he doesn't, and, you know, I am all about the grace of God, the mercy of God, the gospel, preaching the gospel to the lost, and, you know, and, and I think it should be like that, and so what we need to realize is that when the Lord gives us um, a heavy word, whether it's correction, instruction, uh, admonition, you know, uh, it's not, it, it, it doesn't um, collide, it doesn't, um, you know, not line up with his grace, his love, and that's something that the Lord really began speaking to us last year. You know, God's holiness is not at odds with, you know, his goodness or his judgment or whatever. And so my heart and my purpose in this video is not to do a rant because, of course, I have different subjects I'd love to, you know, discuss. But what I want to do is I just strictly want to release what the Lord has spoken to me and, and leave it just at that. We can do other things in other videos. But about a week ago, cl close to a week ago, the Lord spoke to me and he said to me, Rob, all my people want Micah chapter 4. Now, I'll be honest with you. I have been studying scripture for 20 years, Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic, um, you know, interlinear, every translation you could think of, every view, every denomination, Orthodox, Evangelical, Arminian, Calvinist. I mean, I've really dove in. And, and, and I, lo I look forward to diving in a lot more over the years to come. But Micah is not a book that I have specifically studied numerous times. And so when the Lord said, everybody wants Micah chapter 4, I wasn't really sure uh, even what he was talking about. So I opened up to Micah chapter 4. And uh, the subtitle in my King James here is, The Lord Will Rule Everywhere. And so I'm going to read this to you, starting in verse 1. In the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, 
and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways. We will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth out of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, and he shall judge among the people. Okay, so I'm going to leave it right there for a minute, okay? So what I, what I felt like the Lord was saying is, everybody, all the believers want to revel in the grace and the glory of God. And that's awesome. We have for years done events and outreaches and conferences where people get hit by the presence of God and the grace of God and the spirit of sonship. And that's what it's all about. That should always be happening. And by the way, when the Lord releases a heavy word, that doesn't mean that the gospel is all of a sudden not good news anymore. It doesn't mean all of a sudden God is not, you know, uh, is not the same, you know, yesterday, today, and forever anymore. Of course he is. Okay. But see, all the believers, and again, take a moment and share this video. All the believers, they want to revel in the grace and glory of God. They want to go up to the mountain of the Lord. They want to, they want to magnify it. They want to, you know, see God pour out signs and wonders. They want to see God bring reformation to the church. They want all this stuff. And I said, okay, God, what's your point? And then the Lord said to me, my people want Micah chapter four, but they don't want Micah chapter three. They don't want to go through the desert to get into the promised land. So again, I had to go back and read Micah chapter 3. And it literally, the subtitle literally is this, God blames Israel's leaders. Now, for those of you that are uh, Bible school students, maybe you're eschatology students, I'm going to get to you in a couple of minutes. But let me say this, just put away your preconceived notions for a moment and understand that scripture brings us forth prophetic layers. And so it is dangerous for us to just read something in the Old Testament and say, well, he was only talking about this. It only meant that. It was only for those people. Was it written to us right now? No, but it was written for us so that we can see. In the New Testament, it talks about how God used things as an example to show us, okay? Now, in Micah chapter 3, God is blaming Israel's leaders. And specifically, the Lord said to me, Micah 3.11. So I go to Micah 3.11. And, and listen, I'm not saying I felt like the Lord said. I'm saying God spoke this to me. God spoke this to me. And it says, let's start in 10. They build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. The heads thereof judge for reward. So the judges of Israel judged certain directions because they knew they'd receive a certain reward. Talk about corruption. We see that happening in our government right now. The priests taught for hire. They could have been teaching anything. As long as people knew them as, as teachers of God and they got paid to teach, they didn't care what they taught. <laughs> Where do you think doctrines of demons come from? And the, now, now, now listen... This specifically talks about the judges, the priests, and the prophets. And the prophets divined for money. The prophets would use divination for money. Yet, they lean upon the Lord. And they say, is not the Lord among us? Nothing evil can befall us. God is with us. Do you guys see the problem here? So if we want to ascend the mountain of the Lord, you say, well, that's talking about ancient Israel. Yeah, but there's prophetic layers. We're in a church age now, and this age will come to an end. And I'm telling you, if you want to ascend the mountain of the Lord, we have to go through that desert. We, we can't push away what he's called us to. And in Micah 3, it says, God had to blame Israel's leaders. And he had to lay things waste and he had to make the mountain places low. And then he says this, verse 12 of Micah 3. Therefore shall Zion, for your sake, this is, this is what I want you to realize. For your sake, the Lord is not saying, because I hate you, I'm going to destroy you. He's not saying that. He's saying, for your sake, Zion will be plowed as a field and Jerusalem shall become heaps and the mountain of the house as the high places of the forest. 
Do you guys understand what the Lord is saying? Saying, for your sake, I'm going to plow this entire field. I'm going to burn everything to the, to the ground. It's funny that in 2020, this coronavirus hit, right? This coronavirus hit. And what did it do? It fooled the people. Kim Clement prophesied in the mid-2000s, the Lord says, I will fool the people. Yes, I will. Right now, nobody knows who the president of the United States is going to be. Everyone thinks they have it figured out. They're, they're all fooled. On both sides, people, are, they feel fooled because they don't know, right? We think we have it all figured out. We think we've got our eschatology down. We think we had our little programs down. Well, we got a revelation of grace. I get it. God's wrath isn't even in the Bible. I almost went down that road, and I publicly repent before the world right now. I almost went down that road. But this summer, the spirit of repentance hit me at three o'clock in the morning and the Lord began to show me things that I was not even aware of. But you see, it's so sneaky how these things happen. You don't just wake up one day and say, I'm going to choose to just believe that scripture didn't really mean what it says. See, that it doesn't happen that way. What happens is slowly but surely, we get turned away from keeping our eyes on Jesus, and we get turned aside to different winds of doctrine, doctrines of demons, and before you know it, we've got our own interpretation of the Bible, we throw out the Old Testament, we don't believe in the prophetic books anymore, and the Lord's bringing correction. Now listen, with this whole coronavirus pandemic, everything was laid waste. Every church that had the greatest show on earth laid waste. Everybody that thought they had it figured out, everything was leveled. Okay, are you saying that God sent the coronavirus because he just wants to hurt us? No, but he uses everything and works it together for the good. But we've been bewitched, guys. We have been bewitched by another gospel. Now, when the Lord said, the key is Micah 3.11, right now he's dealing with those who, is, who have judged wrongly in the body of Christ, those who have called themselves priests but teach for hire. That's how doctrines of demons come in as well. Uh, and it's connected, this is really crazy, it's connected to Revelation 3.11. When the Lord spoke to me, Micah 3.11, he then said, now I want you to connect it to Revelation 3.11. I have no idea what Revelation 3.11 specifically said because I didn't remember, so I opened up to Revelation 3.11. And the Lord is speaking to uh, the church of Philadelphia. Now this is brotherly love. This is brotherly love. I think it's really interesting that the Lord would speak to the church of Philadelphia and he would say this in Revelation 3.11. Behold, I come quickly. Listen to me right now. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast what you have and watch that no man seizes your crown. Revelation 3.11. Micah 3.11 says the judge is judged wrongly. The, the, the teachers taught for profit only. Right? What's happening here? And the prophets used divination and said, God is with us. Revelation 3.11 says, I'm coming quickly. Watch out that no man steals your crown. No one can steal our crown. We're under grace. We're, we're all one with Jesus, whether we believe it or not. Yeah, the scripture does say that all men were included in his death and, shall, and are included in his life, freely justified by his grace because of what Jesus did. Yeah, that's absolutely true. But it says all who believe are given the right to know, to know him as father to a son, to be children of God. Yes, he provides the faith, but we have to turn from wickedness. It's clear all throughout scripture. It's so clear. The, but Timothy, everywhere, those who call upon the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. Revelation 3.11, Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast to what you have and watch that no one steals your crown. Your crown can be stolen. It can be stolen by false doctrine. It can be stolen by doctrines of demons. It can be stolen by sexual morality. It can be stolen by greediness. It can be stolen by drunkenness. It can be stolen, guys. He's not going to share his glory. It even says in Revelation, yeah, the gates will never be shut. However, nothing unclean can enter.
Let's see what the Lord says about Jezebel. I have never once in, 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 in the career of my ministry taught about Jezebel or even really talked about Jezebel outside of reading the story. Let's look at the church of Thyatira, Revelation chapter 2. It says verse, uh, verse 220, Revelation 220. I have a few things against you because you suffer that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication. That's the number one thing. That's the number one thing. Sexual immorality, okay? And we've been, we've, been, we've been fine with it in the church. You know what? We have not wanted to deal with it. In fact, in fact, we're in rebellion toward God because we won't even do what Paul tells us to do in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 10 and 11. He says, if any man among you who calls himself a brother or sister is living in sexual morality, greediness, drunkenness, whatever, put the wicked man away from among you. Stop associating with those people. We can't even do that. We can't even do it. There are people last year when it came out and we realized victims were being made, we stood up, we lost half our ministry, most of our partners, they all thought we were doing it for the wrong reason or making it up. But you know what? I said, we have to do the right thing. This is wrong. This is absolutely wrong. Do you know how many people refuse to disassociate with those people, even though they are still operating in sexual morality? They are still operating in drunkenness. They're unrepentant. And what does the Lord say right here? Verse 22, Revelation 2.22, Behold, I will cast her into a bed. That's literally a bed of sickness. Okay, that's actually in the Greek, a coffin. That's the word, coffin. Okay, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. Verse 23, and I will kill her children with death. You can't take this out of the scripture. You can't take it out of the scripture. And I have, for the last couple of years, I have actually looked for ways to see if maybe that's not really what it means, but it is. I looked up the Greek. I, I went, it, you can't get around it. And yes, it's wrong to even try to get away around it. But of course, you want to make sure that you're understanding, you know, things correctly. So what happens when you tell people this? Well, they say, we've already ascended the mountain of the Lord. Everyone has. They just don't know it yet. Jesus didn't really mean that. He only means what he said in human form. You know what he said in human form? That if anyone offends these little ones, it would be better that a millstone be tied around their necks and them cast into the sea. And they say, well, that's not really what he means. He just means a quick death would be better. That's all he means. No, he means what he said. It actually says right here, I will kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am he that searches their hearts and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Now, what does that mean? He's saying that those who follow Jezebel, who commit fornication for her, with her, who get in bed with her, will suffer the same consequence that she has. He's saying, if you're gonna get in that bed, I'm gonna tuck you in because I can't have this anymore in my church. I love you too much. And you gotta understand, he says in Micah, for your sake, I will level everything. For your sake, I will level everything. Please share this video. The church needs to hear this. It's because he loves us so much. It's because he's crazy about us. This doesn't mean the gospel's not good news. It doesn't mean he didn't die every man's death. He did. It doesn't mean that he hasn't reconciled us in the body of his death. He did. But we cannot take these warnings out. We have to stop trying to get around things. And we, and we need to repent for even tolerating. We need a zero tolerance policy of demonic stuff in the church. We need a, a zero tolerance policy of sexual immorality. We need a zero tolerance policy policy. I used to drink alcohol in moderation. I won't even touch it. Anymore. I won't even touch it anymore. Why? And I called up and I repented to everyone that I could think of who saw me even ever having, you know, a little glass of wine with dinner. It's not that it's a sin and I'm getting the legalism and all this, but we cannot afford to not have a zero tolerance policy anymore. We cannot, we really never could, but we cannot afford it. We can't afford it. Everybody wants Micah 4. Everybody wants to ascend the mountain of the Lord. But we don't want Micah 3. We don't want to deal with those that are right in our midst, teaching doctrines of demons, judging things God's not saying, using divination to call out prophecy. We don't want to, we don't want to deal with all that. We don't want to deal with our stuff. We want to say, no, I'm full of Christ. I'm clothed with Christ. 
I'm glad you have that revelation. But if every day in your mind is a struggle not to kill yourself and not to live in sexual immorality, but in the public eye you're saying, no, I'm closed with Christ, I, I'm good, I, then something's wrong. Something's wrong. So, Father, right now in Jesus' name, we just have a radical shift in our inner man. Lord, we say we are sorry for getting in bed with Jezebel. We are sorry for getting in bed with the enemy and partnering with the enemy. I'm telling you guys right now, if you have been partnering in any way with doctrines of demons, with messing around with sin, you've gotten in bed with Jezebel, you've gotten in bed with the enemy, you need to repent. Repent is a Latin word, but in the Greek, it, the metanoia literally means have a radical shift in your inner man. Father, help us deal, help us put away the wicked one from among us. People say, no, but there's not really any wicked because God is all in all. We've all, we've all, we're all, we just don't know it. Be very careful with that. Be very careful with the way you articulate that. Because Paul says in 1 Corinthians, put the wicked man away from among you who is operating in these things. We've got judges judging falsely. We've got prophets using divination. And we've got teachers teaching things that do not come from the heart of God. The Lord is dealing with it right now. He's cleaning house. He's cleaning up his church. If you have received this word, share the video. Share it as much as you can. I love you guys. Thank you to all of you who've continued supporting our ministry. Trust me, when we release stuff like this, nobody wants to support the ministry. I don't care. We have to be obedient to what God is saying. He loves us so much. His grace is so abundant. His mercy is new every day. He is so good that he that we can't he can't watch us sit there and get in bed with false doctrine, get in bed with the enemy, get in bed with Jezebel. We can't have Micah 4. We can't ascend the mountain of the Lord without everything being laid waste. Now from this will emerge a remnant. From this will emerge a remnant. I'm just going to prophesy for another minute. From this will emerge a remnant. Will you be part of the remnant? I feel like the Lord is asking right now. Will you be part of my remnant who does not partner with these false judges, false prophets, false teachers? But here's the thing. None of them believe they're false. When you're deceived, it's very difficult because it's happened just little bits by little bits by little bits. We need the revelation of the Holy Spirit. We need the revelation of the Holy Spirit in order to see. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will convince us, convict us of righteousness, sin, and judgment. We need him to show us. So Holy Spirit, I pray for all of my friends around the world right now. I ask that you go forth, that you show them, that you reveal and Father, wherever we have gone astray, wherever we have created our own doctrines, wherever we have rounded off Scripture and say that's not really what it means, Jesus doesn't really say in Revelation that he'll destroy Jezebel and put her, kill her children. Yeah, he does say that. He does say that. Because in order to ascend the mountain of the Lord, no uncleanness can exist. And while Jesus objectively has removed the sin of the world, we have to step into, we have to step into that reality reality. So give us faith. Give us your faith. Lord, let it be activated in us right now. Father, let your joy just come on your people right now as they, uh, as they get right, as, as, as they're aligned with your heart in Jesus' mighty name right now. Lord, we just give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. You are worthy to be magnified. You are worthy, Jesus. Nobody else, nothing else on this planet. You are worthy. And anywhere that we have gone off, take us back to the, to the, the straight and narrow. Anywhere that we've gone off, take us back to the straight and narrow in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, increase our discernment. I just want to pray over you right now that God increases your discernment. Lord, let us have sh the sharpest discernment ever as everything in 2020 has been laid desolate. And now the remnant will ascend the mountain of the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean God's excluding people from his heart. That doesn't mean God's excluding people from his love. No, every human being that's ever lived on this planet, including the unborn, which we have killed by the millions, has a very significant place in the Father's heart. Every single one. Every single one. But we've got to stop partnering 
with lies and death and deception. And we've got to deal with what is in our midst. It's for your sake because he loves you so much. Thank you. I pray this is ministered to your spirit, built you up. We've got a church group. We have an online church, me and my wife, Church 14 uh, Global. You can request to join our group. You can like the page. You can become a member at church14.com. Um, we do Zoom calls during the month. We're doing mentorships. You get my whole online Bible school. Um, you know what? The Lord just told me one more thing because I don't even care about all the, like telling you all the promoting stuff. I, I just don't even care. That's not why I'm doing this video. But, but of course, we love to stay connected and build relationship. One more thing, one more thing. The Lord just spoke to me, Revelation chapter uh, three. He wants me to read something about the Laodiceans. Listen to this. Verse 16. Because you are lukewarm and not hot or cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, I am increased with goods, I have need of nothing. And you know, you don't know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Did you guys hear that? It is possible to not even know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. You say, I'm clothed with Christ. I get it. I have it all figured out. I'm rich in a treasury of knowledge. I'm rich in the knowledge of the end times. Jesus already came back. We are the second coming. Well, he's going to come at this date. Well, the rapture will happen first, and then this, and then that. And we have it all figured out, don't we? No, you know what? We don't. We think we're rich in knowledge and we're rich in wisdom, but we're poor and miserable and blind and naked. We are confounded. We don't even know what God wants. Pro prophets are saying Trump, God said Trump was going to be it. And other prophets are saying, no, that was actually a lying, deceptive thing like, uh, like Micaiah. And, and God uh, did it purposefully to deceive everybody. Everybody's saying something different. The people are confounded. Nobody knows what to believe anymore. This is the time everything is laid desolate so that we can ascend the mountain of the Lord. And remember, Zion is laid desolate for your sake, because he loves us so much. You know not that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. But see, he doesn't just leave it at that. Then he says, I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that you may be truly rich. See, it's always under solution. Our God is redemptive. So let this whole year 2020, let it be a testimony. Let it be a testimony of how redemptive our God is, and that we can accept that he laid everything waste. We can accept that he brought the high places low. We can accept that the prophets don't know if they're hearing from God or not sometimes. And now is the time, now is the time that he's instructing a remnant on how to ascend the mountain of the Lord. After everything's been made de desolate, it's been for our sake. But we have, to, we have to realize we have been poor, wretched, blind, miserable, naked, we think we, uh, yeah, well, in the end, everybody will eventually be saved. Really? Oh, but in the end, more pe most people will go to hell. Really? We don't have it all figured out. We have to keep our eyes on Jesus and we cannot discount anything that scripture says. My point is when we think we have, we, we got it. Oh, I get it. Guys, I'm telling you, I have watched people. I have watched, I have personal friends who had powerful ministries, powerful academies, powerful schools, all about the end times and about this and about spiritual gifts and redemptive gifts, and they fell and their ministries disappeared. Why? Because they were teaching people, this is exactly how it is. I have it all figured out. This is how it works. And then they began to dwindle off into God doesn't care about Israel. God never cared about Israel. Actually, the Old Testament didn't even mean that. Actually, God never even told them to do that. That was actually the devil. And their ministries are gone. I'm telling you right now, he will lay every place that is high, low for your sake. God, increase our discernment in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name, increase our discernment. Receive this word. Receive this word. Let it bring you life. And buy of him gold tried in the fire. I just speak the fire of God over you in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Be blessed. Share this video. Tag people in this video, start watch parties with this video, and let's get the word of the Lord out. 2021 is going to be the year of the remnant, the year of the remnant. Let's rise to the mountain of the Lord together. Let's preach the good news of Jesus undiluted, unwatered down, because he loves us so much. I love you all. Thank you again. Thank you again. We really appreciate you. In Jesus' name. Bless you.